what's going on? Um, just did some yoga. My back is killing me. I played against Indy 11 two days ago, and I don't know what it was. I like fell down my back pretty hard. I was already kind of tight to begin with in that game. And I fell down on my back and it just like locked up. Nothing too crazy. I finished the game and it was okay. I just had to like play a little bit more low key, but now, I mean, it's, it's pretty tight. So I've just been trying to stretch a ton, been doing a ton of yoga. But today is just a full rest day. It's gonna be a pretty chill day. Mimi and I are probably gonna go to the beach. We're gonna hang out. But I just thought I would show you what one of these days looks like since I usually just show you what a day of training and workouts look like or what a game day looks like. So welcome to the video. Here's breakfast, same thing as every single day. I have mushrooms, spinach, and three eggs with some Cholula salt, salt and pepper. I have some blackberries, orange, and then a latte. I did a little Instagram Q and A on my Become Elite Instagram yesterday, and there's a few questions that I didn't get around to, but there's kind of a theme of asking if my diet or my nutrition on my off days is similar to my on days, and the answer is like, for the most part, yeah. I guess I usually do my cheat days or my, I don't have a full cheat day, but I usually do my cheat meals or my cheat, you know, snacks or whatever, typically on my off days. Like for example, I'll have cinnamon rolls for breakfast, you know, on one of the off days or I'll go out and have Chick-fil-A. Um, but for the most part, I'm having the same kind of breakfast, lunch and dinner like today, obviously. <laughs> Going to Disneyland, going all the way back to California. You didn't tell them where we're going? I have not said anything yet. Kiowa. Kiowa. And what is Kiowa? Not Kauai. It's not Kauai, yeah. We learned that it's not pronounced Kauai. <laughs> <laughs> Kiowa is like this little island, um, kind of like 30, 40 minutes outside of Charleston. It's really, really nice. I think the average home price there is probably $5 million. It's and a private It's island. a full private island, but there is a public section of the, uh, of the island that has like a public beach and a little shopping center and everything. Uh, we've been to Kiwa once to go pick up a coffee table and we're like, wow, this place is really nice. So now we're gonna go back and actually have a little beach day there and grab some lunch there as well. Um, there's also like a really nice, like really, really expensive like golf course there. I go there probably like once a week to go play with some of my, my friends. But yeah, that's uh, that's what we're doing. Should hang out at the beach, swim in the ocean a little bit. Seems like a decent day. It's not too hot, not too humid. Some blue sky and clouds. Is Kiowa where the dolphins come up onto the beach? Onto the beach? Yeah, have you heard that? Uh -oh. There's an island over here where the the dolphins like feed like on the beach or something. I don't remember if it was Kiowa. Did they come out and sunbathe with you too? Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> Don't have a poopy diaper. Your back just hurt. <laughs> Gotta tie these things. <laughs> no, I don't think you need to. Oh, <laughs> uh, it's really pulling us this way. I know. Can this get wet? What? Can this get wet? Yeah. your favorite street too, huh? It is. Look at it. Oh my god. It's like a storybook. Yesterday we went to uh, this big ass tree. What is it called? Oh, it, well, it's an angel oak. That's just the species. It doesn't really have a name, but it's the biggest or the oldest, biggest, biggest uh, one. Biggest, yeah. Biggest one east of the Mississippi. It's pretty cool. It's, it's like 400 big. years old. Mm -hmm. We are headed back home. 
Kind of, we were both kind of full from, uh, I was full from the donuts and the protein shake that I had. Surprisingly. Maybe had a little tortilla, chicken wrap, so we decided not to get lunch. We're just headed home right now. I feel a little tired, so once I get home, I'll probably take a nap, but nice day. Nice day on Kiwa. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed that beach session. Session. It was it's all a good. training session. It was. It's a nice beach session. Just getting back from the beach right now, I'm going to have a quick meal, and this is actually going to bring me to the sponsor of today's video, Factor. <laughs> Factor makes meeting your nutrition goals easier than ever by delivering fresh, never frozen, dietitian approved foods straight to your doorstep. Factor supports wholesome eating made simple. Their menus are updated weekly and include over 27 meals and over 33 add-on options. Choose your favorite meals or have Factor craft your order based off of your food preferences and your meal history. Factor takes the guesswork out of meal prepping and grocery shopping, which saves you time for other things. Factor's no hassle prepared meals means that you always have something nutritious on hand when you don't have time or energy to prepare something for yourself. As a pro footballer, I absolutely love Factor. They taste amazing and it means I always have healthy meals stocked in my fridge. They're gonna help my body recover from this morning session and also refuel for tomorrow's session. It also means less trips to the grocery store for me, less planning, less cooking, and less cleaning, which saves me time and means I can spend more time sitting on the couch and recovering. If you guys are interested in checking out Factor, then head to go.factor75.com slash becomeelite120 and use code becomeelite120 for $120 off of your order. Once again, that's go.factor75.com slash becomeelite120 and use code becomeelite120 for $120 off. Thank you to Factor for sponsoring this video. It's like five o'clock in the, uh, the evening right now. I took a little bit longer of a nap than I expected. I was only gonna try to sleep for like 30, 40 minutes and I ended up sleeping for about an hour and a half, full on, passed out, dreamt, all that kind of stuff. But I feel great now. <laughs> anyway, I kind of wanted to talk about a, a more important lesson that I've learned throughout my uh, career. And I've talked about this a little bit. I've hinted at this a little bit more um, in other videos but I think it was very like glaringly obvious firsthand example over the last couple weeks, few weeks for me, and over the last three games. Three weeks ago against Miami, I think I had my worst performance of the year, if not my worst performance in like three years. I had two terrible passes that led directly to two goals, and then I also was defending um, my wing back in the like first five minutes of the game and he just kind of dribbles past me pretty soft. I should have been closer, should have like bumped him a little bit more. And he scores a great goal to the far post, but you know, I got scored on that game. And so three goals I felt like were my fault. I mean, there was other issues at play and everything, but I kind of felt like three goals were directly my fault. Whenever you don't have a good game, you do the typical thing that everybody suggests and you try to learn from it, you watch film and you move on, um, but it's tough. And I think for that whole week, I was, I wasn't depressed or anything, but I was in a low. You know, when I talk about the roller coaster of your career, I definitely felt like I was in a, a lower period because I just kept on replaying that game and those mistakes. And it kind of lingered with me for two or three days where I just was in a, in a bad mood because I just did not perform the way I wanted to. And as much as I wanted to move on, as much as I tried to move on and just focus on the trainings, it was, it was, still, it was still weighing on me. It was still in the back of my mind. And I think the hard part too, about being a pro and hopefully many of you guys will realize this one day when you play pro or and hopefully you might even play at higher and higher levels than me and, and experience this more but as a professional footballer you're in the public arena like you're in the public eye and especially for me on youtube i kind of get this even more but whenever i have bad performances it's kind of i get this onslaught of of messages or dms or comments everywhere kind of critiquing my play which is completely fair i, I had a shocker but you read those as well. And not only are you your own harshest critic and that weighs on you yourself and it kind of brings you into a low, but then even when you try not to look and read the comments or, or pop on Twitter or go wherever, you still do and you still see that stuff. You still read those mentions. And I think it kind of just amplifies that low a little bit more, reading you know, funny tweets, even if you don't agree with it, stuff just like, oh, Matt's past his prime, or he's getting older now, he's not, he's too old for the USL, just random comments, which I don't believe at all. But just reading that, when you're in a darker place after a bad game, I think it amplifies that effect. Anyway, after that whole week after Miami, I just, you know, was so focused on the next game, loud, and that game couldn't come quick enough because I just wanted to prove myself and have a good game again so I could just get out of that funk. 
And luckily, against Loudon, you know, the team had a really good game, and I thought I had a pretty good game. I had a, I had a really good passing accuracy. I didn't have any errors that led to even a shot. Uh, defended well. I whipped in some good crosses, had a shot on goal. I was pretty happy with my performance, and I think that kind of brought me out of my funk. And then yesterday, against Indy 11, I thought I had my best performance of the year, if not even the last two years. I uh, had a great assist to Augie. I could have had another assist. I had a shot on goal. I defended really well. I just I had like a 95% passing accuracy. I was really, really happy with that game. And I was laughing because after the game, after you have a good game, after you get an assist or whatever, you get the exact opposite. You get this onslaught of positivity and supportive comments hyping you up. Matt, beautiful assist, oh my God. Matt, you need to be in the MLS. Oh my God, Matt, what a great game. You're, you're leading the team, all those kind of comments that you get. And again, you kind of get bumped up to a high, and I think those supportive comments, even if you try not to read them or whatever, amplifies that, that high a little bit more. And that experience right there over the last three weeks for me is such an amazing, amazing firsthand example of why you need to stay level-headed through these highs and lows. You can't get too high on the highs and you can't get too low on the lows because I think that you can get carried away in either direction. There's this famous quote from an old American football coach, Lou Holtz, I think he's a, a pundit now or something, but uh, the quote is, you're never as good as everyone tells you when you win and you're never as bad as they say when you lose. And I think like that kind of sums up you know, my experience after Miami and also my experience now after Indy. After my game against Miami, you know, and I'm, I'm in that low and I'm getting those negative comments or I'm getting those DMs or, or whatever, you know, you just have to have that self-belief and you have to have that confidence even when you are in a low and stay level-headed through that period because you're not as bad after that loss. And even if it's a longer term loss, maybe it's an injury or maybe it's a bad full season or whatever, you have to keep that confidence and that self-belief and stay level-headed through those low periods. And even now after Indy, you know, when everybody's hyping you up and talking about how great the assist was or who, how you should be in the MLS, again, you have to stay level-headed and you have to remain humble and you have to keep working hard, you know, despite you being on a high and everything's going well and people are hyping you up and talking about how you should be in the MLS, you have to stay level-headed through those periods as well. No matter what's happening, on the field, off the field, wherever, if you're in a high, low, no matter what, you have to remain that constant level of self-belief, the constant level of confidence, the constant level of humility, and the constant level of hard work. It's always easier said than done, but I think as I've gone through my career, I've gotten better at better at riding in the middle of this, of the roller coaster. But at the beginning of my career, I was, I was not like that. I was the player that would get just elated, so happy, so, so crazy, you know, caught up in the wind of everything on the highs. And I would get really, really down into a deep, dark place on the lows. And I think that, that I struggled with that a ton. And I think remaining level-headed and keeping that, staying in the middle there, has helped me a ton, for sure, for sure. So now I'm going to do what I typically do after games. I'm going to write in my uh, soccer journal. I'm going to talk a lot about what I just said um, to you guys and everything. But I'm also going to talk about kind of individual plays against Indy, um, how the week of training has kind of been going, and just uh, some other just like personal life stuff that is going on with here and me and Mimi and in Charleston and everything. So I'll probably write like three, three, four pages out here. And then, uh, then I'll uh, make dinner. For Mimi and I. Here's dinner. We have a vegetarian pasta, some chicken, zucchini, onions, and mushroom with uh, Alfredo sauce. What are you laughing at? Yeah, it's veggie pasta. That's not vegetarian. Oh, it's just made with veggies? It just has a little bit of veggie Oh, I guess it's not vegetarian pasta. <laughs> I think we're gonna watch this right now, Breaking the Maya Code. It's a documentary about uh, some archaeologists. Archaeologists. How do you say it? Archaeologists. Archaeologists. <laughs> some archaeologists. <laughs> some archaeologists uh, trying to figure out. Um, I like like the, better. It's better. It's way better. Trying to do like the hieroglyphs of the Mayan people. Oh, so, so. <laughs> yeah, well, this is what we're watching. He wrote a description, the uh, relation of the things of Yucatan, 
which he uh, wrote down sometime in the 1560s. <laughs> you couldn't get a, it was based on a picture with his eyes open? Say, 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 a, f, a. The document they produced was not an alphabet. So that was really good. <laughs> Extremely good. <laughs> Way better than I expected. Get your hand out of your pants. I was not in my pants. I was itching <laughs> my thigh. Okay. <laughs> uh, but no, it was really good. It was on Amazon Prime, Breaking the Maya Code. And yeah, there's just much, much smarter people than us out there in the world. Hey, I could do it. You think you could? Yeah, <laughs> give me a code. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but no, it was awesome. Um, now, let's see. It, eight twenty-seven right now. I'm gonna probably do like fifteen minutes of stretching real quick, just to give my back that last chance to kind of like loosen up before I go to bed, and then I'm gonna read. So, uh, no, let's do it. I do it outside. No. I mean, no. No. Why do you? Absolutely. Not. Why? Just on that system. <laughs> So there we go, there's like 17 minutes of yoga. Feeling pretty good. I think if I feel like this tomorrow, I should be able to train. It's just my left side of my lower back. I can just feel it like it's just locked up and like spasmed a little bit. Just, it's tight. But, but I think with a little bit more yoga tomorrow morning, soaking in the hot bath, I should be okay. Pop some Tylenol or some Advil, I should be good to go. Um, I just hope it just doesn't lock up more throughout the week. Uh, and also, I don't want you guys to think that this is how much I do like yoga wise, stretching wise on a typical off day. This is a very rare occurrence just because my back is so tight. Sometimes on off days, I won't do any stretching, zero foam rolling, zero yoga. And other days I'll get like a longer 45 minute session. And then there's days like today where I'm like stretching at the beach, stretching on the couch, doing two yoga sessions because my back is so tight. But most of the time, it's not like this. It's like uh, nine o'clock at night. I'll probably read for about an hour, go to sleep at 10. I gotta wake up tomorrow morning at 6.30 in the morning uh, because we're just pushing training earlier and earlier because here in Charleston it's just getting hotter and more humid as we go into summer. So training now starts at 9.30, being at 8.30. I like to wake up at like 6.30 so I can do my full like morning routine and everything. Uh, but yeah, so I'll read a little bit right now. I'm reading this book. I'm a nerd, so I'm gonna read The Ultimate Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adams. It's actually like five books in one. It's a huge book. I've already finished The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, which is like book one, and now I'm on book two, which is restaurant at the end of the universe. So I was kind of working my way through this. And Gucci's here. What's up, Gooch? Come here. This is where she sleeps every single night. <laughs> All night. Oh, Gucci chair. And then there's him. Hey. What's up, buddy? He sleeps on Mimi. Anyway, guys, I'm going to end the video here. I hope you guys enjoyed a look into my, my typical off day besides the copious amounts of yoga that I was doing today. Um, but this was very, very standard off day for me. Just chilling, relaxing, going outside, doing something kind of active, whatever it is outside and then um, just chilling, hanging, let the body recovering, eating pretty normally, maybe a little cheat snacks or cheat meals here and there, but you know, very, very typical off day. Like I said, we're back in tomorrow with training and a workout, and then we have training basically for the rest of the week, and then we got Pittsburgh Riverhounds at home next weekend, so big game coming up. If you guys liked the video, please hit the thumbs up button, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. All right guys, peace.